All right, now we get to the question sheet. So I have a copy in there on page 17. Pull out your page 17. There is a typo on this page. The last line says, all the way on the bottom, I will be doing a system and safety evaluation when I do the safety evaluation. Are there any rooms you don't want me to go into? Please take your pen and cross that whole thing out. That is not supposed to be on here. All right. Believe it or not, this is probably one of the biggest secret weapons you can have is this sheet of paper. And I know it's extremely simple, but it's so, so, so effective. Like I said, just the act of having a piece of paper, I don't have a pen. Does anybody have a spare pen? Yeah, they even have their own electrical pens. That's nice. Okay. And they're stylish, yes. I am standing here in front of a homeowner with a clipboard, a piece of paper, and a pen. Oh, do you have a question? Oh, okay. Uh, it makes me look like authority in the home. I look, I look professional. I look like I actually care. I'm taking notes, which means I'm actually listening to what you're saying as a homeowner. I am building so much trust and value, it's insane. I haven't gotten to the questions yet, but that's the importance of it. Questions close doors. I don't know where you have to write that down, but write that down somewhere. Questions close doors. When you arrive at the service call, picture yourself at the top of a hallway. As you run your call, you're going to close doors. So when you get to the end, the customer has to go through your door. You don't want to leave any of these doors open because they'll sneak out, especially those high S's with their smoke screen objections. Okay? We got to close these doors as we go down the hallway. Boom, 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 boom. When we get to the end of the hallway, we want them to come out with us. But these homeowners will sneak out these doors if we don't ask a bunch of questions up front. All right? That's also what this sheet of paper does. It asks questions to close doors later so they can't sneak out. All right. First of all, on the top, what does it say? What's the first question? Customer name. If you are bad at names like I am, write their name down so you don't forget it later. I'll tell you what's really embarrassing is running a call and being with a homeowner for two or three hours, and then all the way at the end, you forgot their name. <laughs> okay? You didn't really make a friend. You didn't do a good job. So um, write their name down. If and when you meet the spouse in the home, uh, Hey, my name is Kent, and you are. Same thing to the spouse. Do not dismiss him or her going through the house just because you're dealing with the other one. My name is Kent, and you are. Let them tell you his or her name and write that name down. Why do you think we want their name? What's that? They could be the decision maker because we are going to invite them to come to the show and tell later. And if I don't know their name, it's going to be kind of hard to invite them to come with. Uh, I think it's 86 high C's, just roll with this. I don't know the exact percentage. 
I think it's 86% of all decisions in the home are either made by the female of the home or they are heavily influenced by the female of the home. So if you are dealing with the male of the home, you want to get that spouse involved, if you can. How many times have you guys ran a call where you're dealing with the, the, the male or the husband of the home, you're going through stuff at the kitchen table or through the house, and the wife pops in and says, hey, Bill, don't forget X, Y, and Z. Has that ever happened to you? You think she's listening to everything you're saying? You're damn right she is. She's just not in the room. We want her to be involved. So if we invite her to the show and tell, she can at least has the option of coming with and being involved. I have had both men and women spouses literally sell the job for me. Like they'll talk the other person into buying what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to sell, right? But if they don't come with, if I don't invite them with, they can't do that for me. So my name is, and you are, when you run into the spouse. And maybe it's not the spouse. Maybe it's a, a visitor. It's not going to do any harm to say my name is and you are. It's not going to hurt anything. All right? Okay. Um, then we go to the electrical panel. So we talked earlier, um, I think it was you who said I want to kind of take control of the job. This is one way of doing it. I always try to go, especially with a D, because here's how it goes with a D. I walk in, I'm putting on my, sh my uh, floor savers, and the, the, the high D customer's like, yeah, 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 come over this way. The problem's over in this room because they're in a hurry and they just want to keep going, right? And a high D is the hardest person to take control of a job because they're usually a fairly controlling type person. So, but if you just stop, stay on your carpet or stay by the front door, he or she starts walking, they'll eventually stop and turn around, and then you say, oh, before we go look at that, do you mind if we go look at your electrical panel first? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 it's over here. Boom, you just took control of the job. We're going where I want you to go, not where you want to go. So that's how you take control of the job when you get in there. Now you have your clipboard, you're standing in front of the electrical panel, you're asking them questions and writing down answers, you're the authority in the house now. The call will run your way because you took control right when you got inside the house in a nice way, in a way that they don't even understand how it got switched, but somehow it got switched from me running the call to the technician running the call. And it's all about getting them to go to the electrical panel first. I think somebody mentioned, well, what if they say, ask why? You can literally say, hey, for safety reasons, when I work on your electrical system, I need to know shut, how to shut something off in an emergency. How can they say no to that? Right? Okay, so then we're standing in front of the electrical panel. Now, are your panels like in a, in a usually in a basement or in a garage or where, where normally are they? Basement, basement or garage? Okay, so it's like, it's like Minnesota. Um, if, if it's in a cold garage, we're not going to drag the customer out freezing their butt off in a cold garage and asking questions. So what I would just say is I would stand next to the door that goes to the garage and I would ask him these questions, okay? Or if they're, you know, elderly or something and can't go up and down stairs, I'm not going to make the person try to get all the way down to the stairs to ask them questions at the electrical panel, right? So high C's, don't get black and white on me here. It's okay to divert from the plan and do it on top of the stairs, okay, if the customer can't go down. All right, then we're going to go through these questions. I wouldn't skip any of these questions, even though some of them might be uncomfortable for you. From the first time you've ever used our company to right now, have we been giving you five out of five star service? Why would I ask that question right away? Yeah, what if they're upset with our company already? What if it goes back to the time yesterday we bumped them when nobody came to their house? They just didn't tell us about it. They might be upset with our company. What's that? Exactly. If, the, if we are not at five stars when we arrive, what are the odds we're going to sell anything? Like, I just got here and we're not at five? 
how are we going to sell anything? You're not going to buy something from a three or a four. So we got to fix it now. Why? Why isn't it a five? Maybe we bump them. Maybe, maybe the, the lady on the phone didn't schedule it. Maybe we were out there four years ago and wired something and it, and it broke since then. Or maybe we were out there two years ago and we scratched their floor. They never called us and told us about it, but they're still upset about it. I, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. But we better figure it out. We better figure out the problem. Okay, because when I'm staring down the barrel of a five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar job, and I'm proposing to the customer a ten, fifteen thousand dollar job, and they say, "Yeah, we would do it," but you know, you guys were out here a couple years ago, and you actually scratched our floor. Well, now the price is out. I can't fix it now. Like, we're at the closing table. So I want to know where we're at. From the first time you've ever used our company all the way to right now, have we been giving you five out of five star service? And I'll tell you, if they really hate you, you won't be there to ask this question. So don't expect some horrible thing that's going to come up and you have to deal with it. If it was that bad, they wouldn't have you back in the house. Okay? So don't worry too much about it. Generally, they're going to say, yeah, everything's been great. Now, you might be like, well, what if they're a first-time customer? Yeah, but they called your office to make an appointment, so they already had an experience that could have gone bad. Maybe the lady on the phone was rude. Maybe she didn't know what cities you service or didn't service. I don't know. I don't know what could have gone wrong on the phone. But just because it's the first time doesn't mean they haven't already used your, they have used a portion of your service. They've used your call center. All right? And then, if we continue to provide you five out of five star service, will you use our company for life? I know that's a bold statement, and it's meant to be a bold statement. Close your eyes and just say it the way it's written. Will you use our company for life? And you might get some people who are like, I mean, yeah, I guess. Great. The whole reason behind it is this. A, a human nature is if we proclaim something out loud verbally to the world, we have a very hard time going back on. Is anybody a Chevy or a Ford guy in this room? We got a Ford guy? Okay. If you walked up to your buddies and you said, I love Fords and I will never buy a Chevy ever in my life. And then two weeks later you pull up with a Chevy, what are they going to do? Yeah, they're going to rip on you. They're going to be like, what the hell? You said you'd never buy because you proclaimed it to the world. Same thing with our customers. If our customers say they're going to use us for life, all the way later at the closing table, they might not even know why they're not getting other prices or why they're not going to go ahead with it and they're signing up with you. And it might all have to do with them verbally saying, I'll use your company for life at the beginning of the job. That's a door we're closing. We're getting rid of other companies. If they say, I don't know, I would say, well, what would prevent you from not using our company? And they might say, what if I move? Well, of course, if we don't service your area, Mr. Jones, I understand, then you can't use our company. All right. Yep, yep, exactly like you did it. Just flow right through it. Yep, we don't have to, we don't, uh, especially on these top ones. When we get down to here, we might ask them follow-up questions and dive a little deeper and help build rapport for you D's and C's who hate doing it at the front door. Okay. Um, then, um, you don't necessarily have to ask this question if you already know the answer to it. So, if you're there because their outlets aren't working, you know why we're in the home. If you're there because they want recessed lighting in their living room, you know why we're there. But like on a safety inspection, remember what I was saying earlier? If you go to a house and they, you're doing an electrical safety inspection and that's the only reason you're there, the most important question on this sheet should be, Mr. Jones, why do you want an electrical safety inspection? And they'll say, well, I'm a club member. I get one every year. 
And you'll say, oh, well, thank you for being a club member, but why do specifically do you want an electrical safety inspection? And you might even see their wheels kind of turning, and they might not even give you an answer right away, which again means they don't even know why you're there. And then they'll say something like, well, I don't know, I guess I just want to make sure things don't break. Oh, okay, so reliability is important to you. And he'll say, yes, boom, circle reliability. Um, or, be like, or they might say, well, I just, I just want to make sure it's safe. Okay, great, safety is important to you, circle safety. But again, he or she is proclaiming it to the world that is safety, reliability, or energy efficiency are important to them. All the way back at the closing table, when we present options on a safety inspection, and they say, I don't want to do anything, you can look at them very confused and say, but Mr. Jones, I thought you said earlier that safety was really important to you, and now you don't want to fix the safety items I brought up? Try to close that door. Get rid of that door, all right, because it's a smoke screen. They want to do it. If it was free, they would do it, which means they want to do it. It's just the money. That's the only thing in the way. All right? All right, so really the most important question on the sheet on a safety inspection is that one. And it shouldn't even be what are your expectations for today. It should literally say, why do you want a safety inspection or an electrical safety inspection? That's what it should say. Straight to the point. All right, other than a safety inspection, you really don't have to ask, ask that question. The next question is, have you ever had your electrical service before? It's good to know if another electrician's been out here yesterday, two weeks ago, five months ago, eight years ago, I don't know, it's good to know. Somebody's been here, they've had an electrician in the home. What's the age of your home? That's good information to know. Codes that were intact at the time, general wiring practices that were done at the time, types of wire that were used at the time. How long have you lived in the home? It's good to know how long they've lived there. And again, these are rapport building. This is where I built my rapport because I don't like people, remember at the front? So I use my questions. So they would be like, how long have you lived here? Oh, we've been here 20 years. Oh, wow, that's a long time. You know, I bet the neighborhood's changed a lot in the last 20 years. Oh, it sure has. And we start talking about the neighborhood, things like that. So you can use this sheet to help build rapport. Or maybe at the front door, you're dealing with a D or a C, or maybe even an S that just doesn't like to talk a lot. Small chit chat, rapport talk. But they'll talk about items about their home, that of them in their home. And you can help build rapport with this sheet. Um, have you had any power surges or lights flickering? This is a surge protection question. What's that? Oh, there you said something. Uh, are power outages common in the area? If they say yes, ask how long they're out for. This is a generator question and a surge protection question. Um, I'm just going to finish this set. Do any breakers trip often? I did thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sale off that question. Do any of these breakers trip often? When working on your electrical system, do you have any computers on? Now, this isn't as important as it used to be because most people have laptops and things. Um, do you have any high-end TVs, electronics, or any other sensitive equipment I need to worry about? That's a surge protection question. What kind of scheduled service do you have in place for your electrical system now? That's a club membership question if you have a club membership. If, if people volunteer to role play, we can get out maybe a little early. Just saying. I guess we're here till five. <laughs> <we're here> till five. <laughs> yeah. And I'll even make it easy on you. You'll be the homeowner. I'll be the technician. I won't even make it hard on you. You just have to play in a, a homeowner. Okay? Okay, so back to our sheet. Again, from the first time we've ever used our company till right now, we've been giving you five out of five star service. They say yes. If we continue to provide you five out of five star service, we use our company for life. They say yes, you circle it. 
If it's not a safety inspection, skip the next question. If it is a safety inspection, it's the most important question on the sheet. Why do you want a safety inspection today? And the answer needs to do something along the lines of safety, reliability, or energy efficiency. Have you had your electrical service before? What's the age of your home? How long have you lived here? Have you had any power surges or lights flickering? Are power outages common in the area? Do any breakers trip often? When working on your electrical system, do you have any computers on or any high 10 TV or sensitive electronics? And then what kind of scheduled service do you have in place for your electrical system now? So that's the questions you'll ask in front of the panel. Let me ask you a question. Let's just say you're at a house and the homeowner said he's been living there for 30 years and he's never had an electrician in the house before and you see some yellow Romex running into the panel that's dated 2000. 10. What information do we have now? Well, he might not be lying, just somebody other than an electrician did it, <laughs> right? So we can get a lot of information off these questions, okay? Then we move to the area of work. So like if their outlets aren't working in the living room, we'll go to the living room. If they want a bath fan installed, we'll go to the bathroom. And then you'll ask the four W's. What's going on? When did it happen? What were you doing when it happened? And the most important question on the sheet, if it's not a safety inspection, is the last one. When were you looking at completing the job or repair? That question gets rid of two doors. They can't sneak out of, I have to talk to my spouse. They can't say I have to think about it. Because they're going to say today, hopefully. If they don't say today, we're going to try to get them to say today. So here's an example. Let's say their outlets aren't working in the living room. What's going on? My outlets aren't working in my living room. When did it happen? Happened last night. What were you doing when it happened? I was running in my vacuum. When were you looking at getting the repair taken care of? Oh, well, I'd like it fixed today. Okay, great. And you write down today. If you write down today, can they say I have to think about it? Do they say I have to talk to my spouse? No. You high S's will hate that question, get rid of your smoke screens. All right? Now, let's say you're there to give them a price to add an outlet for a TV on the wall. Now, what's going on? Well, I want an outlet for my TV. Uh, we don't need when did it happen. We don't need what you're doing when it happened. But I will say, when were you looking at getting this work taken care of? If they say anything other than today, you're going to say this. Oh, okay, Mrs. Jones. Well, I know you said you want it done in the next week or so. My company actually allows me enough time to get started with the project today. So assuming we can agree on a price, could I start it today? And you will be surprised, almost everybody says, yes, you can start it today. Now it's today. But notice what I said. Assuming we can agree on a price, could I start it today? Because the only real objection in the customer's mind is the price. So I threw it out there. Now if they say, no, I don't want to do it, I'll look at them very confused and I'll say, but Earlier you said you wanted me to start it today. Has something changed? And they'll say, well, yeah, it's really just the price. Oh, okay, so you do want to start it today. It's just more than you thought it was going to be. Is that right? And they'll say yes. Okay, now we're at the real objection. It's the cost. It's not that they have to think about it. It's not that they have to talk to their spouse. It was more than they thought it was going to be. We can't handle an objection we don't know about. Right? So we have to get to the real objection first. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, we'll get to that. But if they hang around, they can. 
Yeah, I'm just going to the questions, but we'll get there. Yep. But the point is we want to write down today. I've even had it where I've ran a call like on a panel replacement estimate. And I'll say, when do you, when you're looking at getting this taken care of? They're like, oh, you know, in the next month or so. And I'll say, okay, well, you know, my company actually allows me enough time to get started with the project today. So assuming we can agree on a price, could I start it today? And they'll say, uh, well, actually, let me back up. They'll tell me earlier they're going to get several bids, like right when I get there. They'll be like, yeah, we're getting a few bids. You know, you're one of five, whatever the case may be. And then I'll say, could I get started today? And they'll say yes. And in my mind, I'm like, how can I start today if you just said you're getting four other bids or four, three other bids, right? So either they're lying and they're really not getting more bids and they're just saying that to hopefully keep my price down, um, or they really haven't thought it through very much, or they would really like it done today. I think as a general rule, people are like very impetuous when they want something done, so you kind of want to stop. Yes, they do. Yeah, they don't have patience for it, right? Yep. Now. Because you're all technicians in here, I have to do my disclaimer, which is this. When I say I'm going to get started with the project today, that doesn't even need to mean I have to pull a tool out of my truck. Because I know what you guys think. Well, what if it's 3 o'clock? I'm not starting a panel at 3 o'clock. I said we're going to get it started today. Starting the project can mean ordering the materials, scheduling the job, pulling the permit. It can mean all kinds of things. Don't even think you have to start it today. And if for some reason you do sell it after all that, and they're like, you said you were going to do it today. He's like, well, no, I, you know, I can't do it today. I've said I would get started with the project today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule the power company to come out. I'm going to pull the permit. I'm going to order all the materials. I'm going to get everything ready. But by that time, it's sold anyway. You don't have to worry about them backing out. Nobody's going to start a panel at 3, 4 o'clock unless it's an absolute emergency. All right? So I want you get that black and white thinking. Get out of your own way. And don't think, well, I can't start it today, so I'm not going to say that. All right? Same thing with parts. Let's say you sold a bath fan. Or you're giving a price to put in a bath fan, but you don't have a bath fan with you. Don't tell the customers you don't have one with you. You say, the part, the wholesale, our wholesale house is right down the road, because it's always down the road. All right? I don't care if that's two miles or 20 miles, it's down the road. Don't give them a reason to say no. So if they say, do you have the fan with you today? Be like, yeah, I have a couple of them, but if they don't, the wholesaler's right down the road. Don't give them a reason to say no, because that, what they're really saying is, I don't know if I'll have enough time for you to do this today, and I don't want to make a decision today. If you don't have it, you're giving me a way out. Don't do that to yourself. Picture the parts always in your truck, and if it's not, it's two miles down the road because the customer doesn't know or care most of the time anyway. All right? Um, okay, so you guys, very important. I would fill this sheet out on every single call. Repair call, safety inspection, install call, callback, warranty, I don't care, fill it out. And then take a picture of it and upload it to your software if you have a software that does that. Then you have notes of all this stuff for when you go back or a fellow technician goes back to the home. You have a notes of all that stuff. Okay? On the back... You'll notice that there's some things on there. Again, that top line, don't worry about that top line. But as you're walking through the home, you might notice things. So for instance, remember when I asked if there's any breakers tripping? And if they say, oh yeah, you know, uh, my bathroom upstairs, my daughters come home from college and they're using their hair dryers and all this and my breakers keep blowing. Right down on here, bathroom outlet's not working. So you don't forget to price those things. Because you might not even be, you might be there for a bath fan, or you might be there something totally not related to that question, and you'll forget. So put things in here to make you not forget. All right? Do you have a question, Andrew? Yep. 
Yes. Yep. Yep, they are. Can you go over, let's say uh, we go back to that job where it's air reasoning and you have one you see started to fill down, how would that affect that? I would still fill out another one. Like if you're going to a job but you have a picture of one in there from a previous one, I'd still fill out another because things could have changed, you know, since you originally filled it out. Maybe they are having power surges now. Uh, you know, maybe maybe they are having breakers trip often. I don't know. Yep. All right. The other thing is when you walk up to the electrical panel, I'm going to pretend this piece of paper is my electrical panel. When you walk up to it, if the door is closed, leave it closed. If the door is open, leave it open. If there's a breaker trip, don't talk about it. We're just standing here asking the questions. That's it. We're not even going to, if there's a breaker trip, we don't know that's the breaker that ran the thing that has a problem. We don't know that. I've made that mistake before. We don't know that. Just because it's off or trip doesn't mean it has anything to do with the original problem they called you for. If you get up there, this isn't the time to sell a panel either. This is what I see. It's a Federal Pacific panel. They come down for the panel questions. They're like, oh, you got a Federal Pacific panel. Oh, geez. You know, Here's the mypanelsafe.com and, and, and they're, they're UL listings shot and you can't get, this isn't the time. This isn't the time. We'll get there. I promise we'll get there, but not right now. Because if you start telling them about how bad the panel is, what's the next question? How much is it going to cost? And are you ready for that? No. So don't do that. Don't put yourself in a position where you have to give prices or not ready to give prices. You just look at the panel, ask the questions, don't touch it. Okay. If you come into a hoarder's house and there's boxes from floor to ceiling, but there's a nice path right to the panel, is it pretty good chance they got to get to that panel quite often? Probably. Have you ever had the panel door open and all these pieces of tape labeling TV, bathroom with painter's tape and stuff? You think those breakers trip often? Probably, right? So let's be mindful of the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. And then tell them, well, you might have to get here, you know, you might have to get there. So, um, again, don't touch the panel. Just ask the questions. We'll get to, we'll get to our show and tell. Well, you're going to get to word vomit, all the stuff you're worried about. But this isn't the time. All right. <laughs>